In this tutorial, we're going to walk through how to configure the position settings page. The position settings page is crucial to set up either when you're first initially setting up your account or if you've created any new positions. This is always going to be somewhere that you want to go to make sure that your position settings are set up to how you are going to utilize the system. This page is over on the left hand side underneath setup and you'll click on number three, which is position settings. Now on the left, you'll see all the different positions that I'm manager of uh, and all of these settings that we can change can be different position by position. For instance, if I want to change for front desk, I'll go ahead and have front desk highlighted and I can make any changes here. If I want to do fitness attendant, I can click on fitness attendant and make those changes here as well. But anytime I want to apply one of these, one of these settings to all the positions that I manage, I'm, I can just select apply to all positions and then hit save. Let's go through each of these settings one by one and talk about what they do. First is moderation. Moderation is do you as a manager want to approve any, any shift change that your employees initiate? What this means is if one of your employees drops a shift, another one picks it up, do you want to go ahead and have to approve that before it goes through? Now, if you have this off, the staff won't be able to pick up and go over their max hours or anything like that. Uh, but if you have this on, you will need to go for all shift changes to the pending request tab. We'll click on that. And you'll actually be able to see uh, what is the shift that somebody's trying to pick up. And you'll be able to click on the little edit pencil here. And this will allow you to moderate it. And it will let you know how many hours that this person will have if you go ahead and allow them to, to work this shift. Next one down is availability. A couple different ways to collect availability within the system. Uh, short version, there's, uh, there's two different uh, options here on this page. First is based on shifts. In this method, you're actually going to uh, be creating shift templates with start times, end times, days of the week, uh, and they'll be able to go in and say, yes, I can work that, or no, I can't. Uh, based on hours, it's just an open calendar, so they won't see anything from you. It'll just be April 5th, April 6th, April 7th, an open calendar, and they can drag and drop when they're available generally for that day. Now, I would recommend on our support site, we have two different videos. One is what is shift-based scheduling and the other was what is hourly-based scheduling. I recommend watching those as those are gonna go in depth onto the best way to schedule depending on your organization. Uh, and hopefully after watching those videos, you'll be able to know the best way to go. However, if you schedule for events, so you are use, utilizing our event scheduling tool, which is right down here, uh, there's, a, there's again, another couple ways to collect availability. One way is survey-based availability collection. And this means you'll actually send the events out uh, to your staff. They'll see the dates and the times and they'll be able to choose what they can work and what they can't work. If you're using survey-based availability, you'll wanna choose based on shifts here. Uh, if they're not, and you're just collecting general availability with the open calendar, you can change it. You can have it be based on hours and scheduled that way for events. Next up is dropping partial shifts. So with dropping partial shifts, this is if somebody scheduled for, let's say, a four-hour time block, 8 a.m. to noon, would you let them drop a piece of that? So would you let them drop maybe from only 8 to 9? If not, if it has to be the whole thing, you'll choose do not allow. However, if you want to be able to give them some more flexibility, you can choose either uh, what's the minimum amount of time they can drop. So if you have it as one hour here, if you have an 8 to noon shift, They'll be able to drop either 8 to 9, 8 to 9.30, 8 to 11. They'll be able to choose, but the minimum amount of time they can drop is one hour. Next up is shift series settings. This is if somebody is scheduled for the same shift. I mean, the same shift, which means the start time and end time is the same. The shift name is the same. The notes are the same. Everything is the same. Uh, you would, they'd be able to drop multiple shifts at once. So the system will detect that they are working six, uh, maybe Wednesdays in a row, all the same shift. When they try to drop the first one, it'll ask if they want to drop the rest of them too. They can say yes, and then it will drop those five or six shifts all at once. Next up is overtime settings. This is a crucial piece of setup for any new position or any new account. What this is, is it, this is how the system is going to calculate um, the amount of hours that somebody works in a week. We have to tell the system, what is, what is my week? For my organization, what is a week? Is it Monday through Sunday? Is it Sunday through Saturday? Is it... Friday through Thursday. So you'll be able to select what that work week start date is. And if this is the same across the board for every position in your account, you can go ahead and make your selection, choose apply to all, and then hit save. And this will change it for all the positions that you are a manager of. If this is not set at all, the system won't know how to make overtime, uh, how to make overtime calculations and won't be able to stop people from working more than what they have set in their max hours. So make sure that this is set inside your account. 
Next up is holiday settings. This is the only uh, setting in, in this uh, page where it is company wide. It's organization wide. This is not just position by position. So for the holiday settings, you're gonna be able to put in a name, the date, and what the uh, multiplier is. So let's say everyone gets time and a half on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you can add those two in and go ahead and uh, put in the rate and that will automatically happen to everyone that works on, on this day throughout the whole organization. Specific dates are going to be needed added for, added for each year because although Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are always the same date, Memorial Day and Labor Day are different. So these will need to be added for each specific date. As you can see, it says 2022 is listed here. So the Christmas Eve and day will need to be added again for 2023 for this to take effect. And lastly, we have report settings. Uh, basically what this means is uh, for, different, some, uh, for different reports that you can use for payroll, uh, these are settings that you're gonna be able to configure. Um, so for instance, if you need to have an account number associated uh, with, uh, with any of these specific positions, you can add these here and they will show up on the different uh, reports that we have. Uh, if you, for the payroll signature, if you want to, um, uh, on the signature form, have a customized text, you can put this in here as well. If you're thinking you might need to make any changes here, I recommend reaching out to our support team. Uh, you can email us at support at and we'll be happy to walk you through what, uh, what, these, what this area will actually change. And that is position settings. Uh, as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us. You can give us a call at 617-401-8733. Our office hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks so much.